All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to V Brown Bag. Today is Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017. And tonight we're going to hear from Sean O'Dell about V Realize Network Insight. Um, as always, uh, vbrownbag.com to catch any of the previous recordings. And don't forget to get in on the conversation. We've got the question box uh, in the webinar tonight. Feel free to ask some questions. If you'd like to be unmuted to ask with your mic, just let us know. Uh, also, join in the conversation on the Twitters, uh, hashtag vbrownbag or uh, at vbrownbag. Uh, and then, of course, on the right side of the screen there, you see some of the other vbrown bags we host for the other regions uh, and their reoccurring dates. I am your host, Tim Smith, at tsmith underscore co on Twitter. We've also got Tom Green, at tbgree00. Say hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. And tonight's uh, guest speaker, Sean O'Dell, at the Sean O'Dell. He, he, is, he is the only one, so it is the Sean O'Dell on the Twitter. So, uh, Sean, do you want the myth, the legend? The yes, the myth is, and uh, I haven't heard the legend yet, so I'm hoping to hear the legend tonight. You're you're not gonna find it. Not gonna happen. Sorry. So, Sean, on, uh, go ahead and give yourself a uh, introduce yourself, and uh, I'll pass over presentation to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim, Tom, and the uh, the rest of the crew that's out there tonight. So as a joke, Tim Davis said I was the legend. Let's be clear. My mom thinks I'm a legend, and that's all that matters. Okay? Maybe my kids. But uh, no, so a little bit about me before we jump in here. Uh, I've been with VMware about seven years now. I joined back in 2010. Uh, at that time, I was, um, you know, cloud management. Uh, so I covered vRealize. Uh, ops, you realize automation, um, you know, log insights. Uh, if you go back, even VMware configuration management, that is actually how I got my foot in the door because I was a VMware configuration manager customer or before that it was EMC and even before that it was a startup called ConfigureSoft. So that's how I got in the, uh, in the door at VMware. Uh, I left VMware. I know that doesn't happen all that often. Uh, but I did. I left VMware in April of 2015, and I went to a startup called Arkin, um, and I am wearing a Run NSX with Arkin t-shirt tonight, just just for for kicks on this uh, on tonight's V Brown bag. And I was there about 14 months before VMware acquired Arkin. So uh, uh, yes, I was brought back, and no. In spite of what some people say, I was not brought back, or they did not buy Arkin because of me. They bought Arkin because of the product and the staff and everything. And I'll say this, even from the onset, look, Arkin makes me look good because it, it demos really well. It works, the functionality. Hopefully, everybody on the conversation um, today will uh, will agree. I know my customers, who I work with all the time, agree, uh, but I am a little biased. So, um, but yeah, uh, and and the kind of the new information news that uh, is uh, in my world. Not only do I cover Network Insight and NSX, that's what I've been doing the past 10 months since the acquisition, uh, but just recently I now am a part of the VMware cross-cloud services team. And some of you are probably thinking, what in the world is cross-cloud services? Um, I will post a video after uh, a YouTube link after the session tonight. Um, it's actually from VMworld last year with Guido Appenzeller, and he highlights the cross-cloud architecture and specifically cross-cloud services. So I'm um, not fully able to talk about it just yet, but when I am, we will absolutely jump on here and talk about that. So that's a little bit about me. That's what our focus is. Feel free to ask questions as we get into this tonight. Happy to, uh, happy to be on here and hear everybody. And uh, hopefully I do not let Tom down because he said... Um, that I was under a lot of pressure, so let's the, get after it. The pressure is on tonight, and we're really happy to have <laughs> you on. And again, anybody, if you'd like to be unmuted to ask a question, feel free to let me know in the question. I'll unmute you. And uh, Sean, I'm going to go ahead and pass you the presentation. Perfect. Let's uh, let's see if I can use this Citrix stuff. All right, there we go. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. 
right. All right, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a death by PowerPoint tonight. I've got 39 slides that we're gonna go. Through. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Um, if you know, if you've ever heard me talk, ever give me a presentation in VMworld or whatever, um, I personally hate slides. Um, they're always important to set the stage. So let me uh, let me get rid of this here, so it is not showing, or maybe it's not showing and I don't notice it. All right. So first things first, this is for Mr. Tim Davis and everybody out in the Twitter world. Tonight we are talking about VRNI, not, right. not that other thing. And just in case, uh, I had some friends, Tim, I think you've seen this before. Yeah. I, had some, I had some VMware coworkers create a GIF of me. Um, don't ask me why, when, where, and how that was. But uh, yes, it's VRNI or Network Insight. I have no idea what this other thing that everybody keeps talking about. Sorry, Tim. All right, so in true fashion, we're going to jump right into architecture uh, because I think this will set the stage of you know, how we're collecting the data, and then, and then I'll get into a couple slides of what we do with the data, and then we'll get into a demo. So Network Insight, or as Arkin, as I call it, just because I can, um, is a is, is, is really a network operations and a security operations platform uh, specifically focused on VMware, VMware NSX, uh, physical networking gear, uh, that is routing switching, that it even gets into Palos or Palo Alto from a, from a layer seven perspective if you're doing offloading, redirection, and, and, and obviously routing as well. Um, so Network Insight from an architecture perspective, it is a scale out architecture. There's really two keys to the architecture, one of them we call the platform. The platform, I'll show you kind of in detail on the next on the next slide. It is an application, it's a, it's a big data app um, that does all of the cool functionality. Um, with that, the, uh, the, the, the there is a proxy or a, v, a proxy VM or what we call a collector VM that does all of the collection from the endpoints. So what endpoints do we support? This slide details it very specifically. Uh, vSphere, vCenter, NSX edges, NSX manager, controllers, various network vendors, that is physical networking vendors, by the way, as well as UCS and some uh, you know, HP type, uh, HP blades, et cetera. With that in mind, we are a read-only system today. So while we are making API calls and or SSH and CLI calls uh, to specific devices, physical and virtual, um, we are going to be read only. So we are not making changes. We're not asking really anything more than read only permission. Uh, the other thing I would note, we are a basically a pull methodology uh, for all of those data types, whether it's API, SSH, CLI, SNMP, um, from, a, from a collection perspective. Now you're probably saying, why are you collecting from all of these different types of things? Um, really, to the genesis of Arkin, we were seeing data centers that, uh, or organizations that had created silos. I've got my VMR team, I've got my network team, I've got my security team, and nobody talks to, uh, you know, amongst themselves. And in reality, they all have their own data. So when there is a problem, I do remember when I was on the customer side before I joined VMware, we'd get into a room, there's an application down or whatever, and everybody would say, hey, according to my stuff, we look good. And that, that just doesn't really benefit the organization. So we wanted to bring network security and VMware data together inside the platform. There is one push methodology from a data point perspective. Um, network Insight is an IP fix collector. And today we do support IP fix uh, coming from each ESXi host. So for the most part, we get everything from the vCenter APIs uh, and obviously the NSX APIs, but we will collect or we will um, accept IP fix NetFlow data on UDP port 2055 from ESXi hosts and just just so uh, just in case somebody's like what is IP fix? Uh, IP fix is the header details of every single packet that traverses um, a, a switch. In this case we are focusing on the virtual distributed switch. So that's a little bit about the higher level architecture. I do have some other architecture slides we can get into later on, uh, but I wanted to kind of set the stage for this particular conversation tonight. The next thing is from a, from a, from a, from a scale perspective, I get a lot of questions around this. We are a scale out architecture. 
So as you can tell on the right-hand side via the graphic, um, you can deploy multiple platform VMs or what we call nodes. Uh, it is a minimum of three. Uh, today it is a maximum supported of five that will support up to 30,000 virtual machines. Now you might say, I've got greater than 30,000 virtual machines. Well, we actually can support it. Um, you just gotta go through the whole GSS exception process from VMware, blah, 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 blah. We don't need to talk about that. Um, so it is a scale out cluster. AJ is not supported. It's a linear scale out. Um, we are collecting, it's actually pretty amazing. I mean, we can collect tens of, you know, tens of millions of flows each day from our customers. Um, in some cases, upwards of 10 to 15 million flows. Uh, and then ultimately we go gather vCenter data, NSX data, Palo Alto data, you know, physical data as well. And so a, a lot of people ask, hey, what is underneath Network Insight? You know, what, what is this? Is this Microsoft SQL or Oracle? Nope. Uh, we are a big data platform. Um, we are utilizing things like Kafka, Samza, Yarn. Um, we have HBase, Elasticsearch, um, as well as uh, a little bit of Postgres uh, from, a, from a scale perspective excuse me, from a data store perspective, but this is the overarching high level architecture. Um, maybe if it's interested, we could have a conversation even even deeper into the uh, the underpinnings of Network Insight at a later time. So I'm gonna stop right there before I go into any of the use cases because I'm an architect at heart and I actually care how stuff works and I bet a lot of folks on the call or maybe they are, maybe I'm wrong, but are there any questions on the collection of data, where we're collecting data from, and the overall scale of Network Insight? What is the largest customer deployed? The largest customer deployed, 48,000 VMs. The, uh, we do have customers who have more VMs than that, they just haven't actually uh, consumed all of their VMs. Um, to, to put it into context, our largest current, you know, VM deployments, 48,000 VMs, um, but we do have a customer that bought 8,000 sockets of Network Insight, and we, we do license by hosts, so just think that's 4,000 ESXi hosts. We have another question here from Graham Mitchell. If three is the minimum number of platform VMs, does it make sense for small organizations with under a thousand virtual machines? So here's the catch. Um, in reality, because it's scale out only, not HA today, it will be later on in the year. Um, it, it really depends on the customer, what they wanna do. If, look, in the end, if it's not HA and you're just doing linear scale out, uh, you know, I think every organization will have to make that decision on their own. So um, okay. for licensing, you said that it's licensed per socket, but it can gather from non-host sources? Yep. So uh, do you have to pay can. licensing for that, or can I just monitor every one of my Citrix, or sorry, Cisco switches one, three sockets? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in, in this case, if you have Basically, the way the licensing or I guess the legal restrictions are, your VMware data center, so if you've got 10 hosts, um, you can connect and support uh, all of the physical gear for those 10 hosts. That does include UCS chassis, HP blades, obviously the physical host if it's just a 2U box uh, or pizza box. Uh, and then from there, we go out to the network devices, so switching, routing, if you've got Palos from a security perspective, all of that is encompassed in licensing the vSphere host for Network Insight. We, we basically didn't want to nickel and dime customers because that would be a beating if we had to get into counting, hey, well, you've got 39, you know, L2, L3 devices and you've got 40 hosts and it just, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. It's simple. Um, and so we just license it per ESXi host now is per socket. Is that that the, I guess, what you're monitoring? So if you don't monitor, is it possible to not monitor VM hosts? And then would you even <laughs> need a license then okay. at that point? So it, it really, we break it down by vCenter. So the way it works, because you're collecting IP fix data from uh, each cluster, uh, or excuse me, from each ESXi host, um, you in theory have to license at a minimum a cluster. 
not not necessarily an entire vCenter. But I would argue from a functionality perspective, if you have cluster A license for Network Insight and it's talking to cluster B, um, you will diminish the value of the solution because you're not gathering the data. And then this so is a, it, a vSphere solution, right? You wouldn't use it to only monitor Cisco devices or? Uh, it is based on vSphere. Um, I'm not going to say I've never seen it being done with just pure physical devices. It has been, but that is not our use case. The, the use case is vSphere down. So I, I have seen customers add all of their you know, campus network devices to it. It's not really what it's meant for, but if you get value out of it, congratulations. I'm happy for you. You, ha you do have to note that you're not collecting any IP fix data from anything but the virtual distributed switch. That is absolutely correct. Thanks for, thanks for clarifying, Tim. Um, and, and I think once we get into the use case, I think you'll understand why that is. Um, and I'll, and I'll kind of explain why that's the case. Okay. All right, let's move on. Let's get into use cases in a demo so we can get the show on the road. So Network Insight, there are three primary use cases. Uh, the first one is around security um, and micro segmentation. So the first thing when I, when I get into the demo today, um, I'll probably show you a little bit of the UI and the search functions, but then uh, I will jump into the first use case, which is the ability to observe traffic from your workloads, from your you know, VMware VDS workloads, and provide you with recommendations on how to micro segment within NSX. Um, so that's that, that's kind of the first use case. Now the secondary use case around security is we absolutely do support the Palos. So if you're using uh, you know firewall rules, security groups, application groups from Palo, we will absolutely support those, uh, and we will you know tell you, hey, this VM has you know, five rules from NSX, and you know two rules that are redirect rules. From, uh, that are going to the Palos. The other thing is uh, we do have a time machine function throughout the data set, so most organizations are using Network Insight from an audit and compliance perspective of what's changed, you know, VMs that are added to a security group, firewall rules that changed, uh, even to routing postures, you know, static routes, dynamic routes, uh, a bunch of different stuff from, a, from an audit and compliance perspective. The second use case, uh, and, and I'm going to go through these quickly so we can get to the demo, um, the second use case is all about network visibility. Um, I typically refer to this as overlay and underlay visibility, uh, where we will look at a VM and how it traverses the core, you know, the physical network, whether that's L2, L3, um, and if you're doing L7 on a Palo as an example, we'll, uh, we'll show you the details there. Um, the other thing that we, we focus on with network uh, visibility is not, not only the physical components, but how does a VM, maybe a, a VM that doesn't have NSX, how does it traverse uh, its non-NSX world to a VM that does have uh, NSX, and maybe it's using VXLANs uh, and even you know the, the the DFW from a micro segmentation perspective? So we'll we'll bring that all together. Not only do we have the configuration data, but we have the performance data, and so we can go look and say, hey, this VM. Um, is communicating with this VM, here's all the ports on the path, here's the packet drops on a particular physical switch or a particular virtual switch, and with that in mind, we will actually tell you, hey, there is a problem, and we will pinpoint where we believe the problem is. Last but not least is best practices, health, and availability of an NSX deployment, um, and, and you can tell here I do have a lot of focus on VMware NSX. Um, I, I am looking forward to what we're adding, um, and because I typically spend most of my time talking, you know, roadmap and futures with customers now, I'm going to have to be very careful not, tonight not to slip and actually tell you what's coming out. So let's just hope that I don't do that. All right. So that's the three primary use cases. I think once we get in the demo, um, you will see more use cases than what I am going to describe. But reality is, I like our customers to uh, to actually have their own use cases once they get into Network Insight. So, real quick, I just transitioned from the slides. Can everybody see my screen from a demo perspective? Looks good over here. All right, perfect. So, welcome to Network Insight. By the way, um, I use 
the search functions like nobody else does because I, when I first started using Arkin back in the day, there was no GUI, but we do have a GUI now. So you see it over here on the left-hand side. Um, it is secondary. It is pretty much hidden unless you hover over it. So I'm going to spend pretty much most of my time in the search bar. That's just because how I roll. Um, and so here we go. So we actually can search across all data. So in this case, I know um, I'll focus on a VM real quick. So I can just do a quick search for all the VMs. Um, what this does is it searches over the last 24 hours. So the default selection, or to me, as of now. Um, so the default selection is now. You can go back in time. You can do it at a specific time or between a specific time. The default retention is 30 days. Um, it's actually 45 days in the back end, 30 days in the UI that can be modified. We will support even more. Um, uh, we will support some additional functionality in the next release um, that, uh, that I think will make everybody happy. But the default retention is 30 days in the UI, 45 days on the back end. Okay. So with that in mind, I did a search for all, all of my virtual machines. Um, on the left-hand side, you notice I have a bunch of filters. These are all of the available criteria that you can do a kind of a sub-search or a, uh, a filtered search. So if you're an Amazon user and you ever do an Amazon Prime and you're looking for something, or I go back to the Newegg days uh, where you could say, hey, I want a CPU, and then you could sort by AMD or Intel or whatever. Um, that's kind of what we've done with this. Um, so I can just literally scroll down and I see all of the functionality um, from a search perspective. If you hover over them, by the way, like network address, we will tell you what this means. So some customers say, hey, what's the network uh, max, you know, RX and TX rate? When you hover over it, it will tell you it's the maximum network uh, data received over uh, the last five minute window. So we got a, you know, a couple different ways to look at this data. Not only do we have the filters, but I can actually go in and search. So I want to go in here and say VMs where VLAN equals, and let's hope I get, uh, hope I get some results here. VLAN 615. Okay, so I've got all my VMs on a specific VLAN. Um, I could even, you know, kind of go back and say, hey, give me all the VMs where, uh, and by the way, if you notice as I type, I should have, sorry, I get ahead of myself. Um, when, you, when you begin to type, notice I just hit VM and space, and it tells me what the operations are. And it also tells me some of the existing or potential searches that have the word VM in them. So if I do the word, uh, let's just do firewall. So notice that I type firewall here. It actually tells me, hey, I can do a search for NSX firewall rules. I can search for firewall rules in general. And uh, that will actually encompass, in this case, um, NSX and Palo Alto um, firewall rules. And there's a few things in this demo data set that I'm going to pretend that I don't see. Um, and you can ask me on a sidebar question what that is, because I have no idea. Hopefully, you guys are noticing what I'm talking about. Um, so let's do this real quick. VMs where firewall status equals X. And I'm going to look for all my VMs that are protected with NSX from a DFW perspective. And in this case, I've got 149 results. I can expand this. And there is a plethora of data here. I am not going to focus on all of it tonight. Um, but uh, this just does give you a high-level idea of what information we are bringing in from a VM perspective. I could go in and do switches. And I can see a where vendor equals X. And give me all my Cisco gear. So. The key is any of these searches that I've been running, um, you can actually, you know, based on the time, you can go back in time and look. You can absolutely set a, uh, an alert and or notification based on any of these searches. Um, we do have some based out of, you know, out of the box. Um, I personally hate alerts. Um, so uh, we, what I've said from the beginning is let's keep it minimal and make sure you, the customer, can put it in your hands. Not only can you create an alert, you can create it as a problem if you wanted to. And then more importantly, notification frequency, whether you want to know immediately or my favorite, I need a daily, daily digest. And then uh, today we support SNMP and SMTP from a delivery of an alerts perspective. Any initial comments or questions on search before I get into a few use cases and you see a little bit more of the data? Don't be shy. This is uh, the chump. It says that the GUI looks very intuitive and it's great that you don't have to use search you can just <laughs> click around now if you want to you can you will hurt my feelings if you do use the GUI but it is what it is 
All right, let's talk use cases. So first use case, we are a flow collector. Um, the, the, the reason behind being a flow collector, as I said uh, in the initial three use cases, is our goal of Network Insight is to help you deploy micro segmentation or operationalize micro segmentation that is in SX in this, uh, in this specific use case. So we are a generic flow collector. We collect flows from the VDS only. That is ingress and egress, the virtual distributed switch. The VSS doesn't support it, or the standard switch, if you want to call it that. It doesn't support IP fix. We have not done testing on uh, supporting, you know, physical flows like S-Flow, um, J-Flow from, you know, Cisco or Juniper or whomever. And uh, we have not tested it, so we don't support the 1KV as well um, from, a, from a flow perspective. So, so hopefully you, I'm being very clear in saying what is supported and what is not supported. Uh, if it works, I have no idea. I will plead the fifth on if any of those other ones work. Um, but today our, our, our focus is purely around the VDS to help you micro-segment. So think of it this way, and I always said it in this fashion, I mean, it's a flow, right? So you've got, um, you've got all the source, destination, port and protocol details. From a Network Insight perspective, we actually put some logic around it. So we will tell you what type of traffic it is, Notice I do have east-west traffic and internet-based traffic. Um, I can also look at the flow type. So we will tell you, hey, is this a flow that is going to a VM? Uh, that's where you have this destination VM. Is it a routed flow? Is it east-west? Do I have a, is it, you know, from a VM to physical? Is it VM to VM? Is it intra-host? I mean, there's a lot of things that we're doing from an intelligence perspective because we understand the VMware um, architecture and the VMware space that we can absolutely tell you all of these different types uh, of, uh, of flows. One question I do get sometimes is, okay, great, you're looking at all the flows. What if it's a TCP flow and uh, it's denied maybe at, an, uh, that at a perimeter firewall? Uh, we will actually validate that a TCP connection is both ingress and egress. So if it is denied at a, at a Palo as an example, we won't actually get the return response um, on the flow, so we will we will invalidate it. Um, and and so, if it's a TCP flow and it communicates, there is a connection, there is a handshake. We do validate that across the board, um, and so we will consider that a true flow. Um, the other question I get oftentimes is, can I classify my traffic? Um, what if uh, there's uh, one of our customers out there? Uh, and and uh, Mr. Uh, I'll just say his name's name Justin. Um, when I first went had a conversation with him, this was back in the Arkin days. He said, "Hey, look, we have all of our you know desktops um, in the RFC 1918 space, but you guys automatically classify that as east-west traffic." He's like, "I want to make sure that that's north-south traffic." So what we've done over the past few versions is we've added a few setting options. So there is a settings GUI. A button but I prefer this fashion we can actually allow you to come in and say hey what what uh, addresses ranges subnets are east-west and which ones are north-south so the RFC 1918 space is is kind of the generic you know end-all be-all um, and we do put some instruction in here at least some some information that says what they are and how they are defined so um, we are a flow collector we will flag the flows based upon you know the information we have is it, a, is it a VM to VM? Is it a VM to physical? Is it physical to VM? Is it an internet to VM? The key is we will get any flow as long as it is ingress and egress, the virtual distributed switch. With that in mind, the next thing that we like to do with that data is not only collect it for you. Um, so if I just go look at flows again, um, you know, I can look at the, the individual data here. If I look at this individual flow, Notice we do have the amount uh, or when the flow actually uh, happened, uh, how much, you know, what was the source destination bytes. And you're probably going to ask, why does it say no data? That means the flow is not going on at this particular time. So if it opens and closes, then you're actually going to see some no data in the data set. Um, if it is a connection that stays open, we will absolutely show you the source destination um, and ultimately all the packets that are traversing. And then, uh, you know, kind of a high level data perspective. Okay, so that's the individual flows. Now you say, great, I already have a flow collector. You know, everybody's already doing flows. I've had this on the physical network. I totally agree. The difference is what we do with that data. 
So uh, I'm actually just going to type in the word plan security here. To, um, and, and this is really meant to help our customers plan micro segmentation. So we're going to plan the security around it. Um, we're going to provide some high level details. Like in this example, I'm focused on VLANs. Um, it will work with VXLANs, but real quick, I can say, hey, you know, my prod web VLAN is commuting in uh, both incoming and outgoing in some bidirectional communication with another VLAN or with the internet and or with a shared physical, um, some shared physical assets or some DC physical assets. So we do want to provide our customers kind of some base, um, you know, starting points. So that's why you see things like VLANs, uh, subnets, folders, vSphere clusters. Um, you can do it by port. The one thing to note here is I can do this without NSX. So I can come in, I can, you know, observe, pull all the flow information from my VDSs kind of in a, in a day zero fashion. And I, can, and I can provide you recommendations. I'll show you that in just a minute. So we're talking day zero, no NSX at this point in time. And there's a lot more on the screen I could show you, but for the sake of time, I'll be pretty specific. Uh, the other thing I get oftentimes is, okay, look, we don't, we have a flat network or we don't have all of our web servers on a particular VLAN. I've got, you know, really just a hodgepodge of, uh, of what my environment looks like. So what we've done as the latest version of Network Insight is I can actually come in and define an application. So I've already built one called ProdApp. Uh, ProdApp is a three-tier application that I have defined. So we're now putting it back into your context from an organization perspective. And we've defined ProdDB as basically being VMs with a specific VM name. Same thing for Prod Mids here. In this case, Prod Mids here is VMs with a specific you know, uh, syntax. The other thing is we can also do a combination. So this one's VMs and IP addresses. You say, okay, well, what other ways can I create conditions in each of these properties to define how my applications are communicating? Um, the one thing that uh, we see here is, you know, VM names, IP addresses, VMs are the specific, you know, service port. You can actually do a custom search um, that, that is available. You know, you literally can do a VM and do it by an L2 network if you wanted to is an example. We really put it back in your hands. You can define your application. The cool thing is, maybe I'm biased, but I think it's cool, is any of these criteria is based upon a search. So we're gonna go throughout the whole data set. We're gonna look at objects. We're gonna look at the VMs to build out each of these tiers. Um, now each of these tiers uh, is a part of an application. If you wanna create more tiers, you can absolutely do that. But in this use case, I'm just using a traditional web app in uh, DB tier uh, to, to, to create the application. Now you say, okay, well, what do I do with that application? I am going to plan security in this use case, and I am going to select that application. So there's my app. There's my production app. I could do it up to 30 days if I wanted to. That's the data retention. I'm just going to do it for one day. I'm going to analyze it, and because Tim likes to uh, kind of uh, give me pointers via text as I'm doing a demo, which I appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna show you something here real quick um, from a traffic distribution perspective. So this right here, the, the, this traffic distribution, actually tells you what your application is doing. So is it, you know, in this case, 97% of the communication is east-west. And because we have a, you know, an architected environment where we're using physical switches, um, not VXLANs, um, we can actually say, hey, right now, 63% of that traffic is switched or routed. Um, is it VM to VM communication? And then, hey, is any of it within the host? There is kind of a catch here. Um, and we do have an assessment mode of Network Insight. We call it the, um, the, the, the VMware Network Assessment, where you can actually do an assessment um, of your environment and get all this information to help you um, to, to justify your NSX or, you know, okay, well, if we move to logical routing, we could actually reduce hairpinning from a physical perspective. Um, there's a lot of different ways to look at this data, but uh, we do provide this to you. We have a nice pretty PDF report if you wanted to go that route to justify your NSX sale to your uh, to, to your management. Um, so that is available. So anyway, back, back to, actually I'll pause real quick before I show you the tiers. Any comments or questions on flows, what we do with the data and the creation of an application? We did have a question about searching. Can you search based on VMware tags? 
<laughs> All right. Today, no. Um, and I'll be honest with you. vSphere 5.5 five, five, um, was not the greatest on an API for tags. It was added in 6.1. It was even made better in 6.5. Um, I, because I can't discuss dates and or future product, I will just state we are going to add it in a future version. And if you hit me up on a non-recorded uh, system, I'll tell you when. So I gotta be, we, I gotta do be have a, uh, we do have a debate going on. Where do you fall between SQL versus SQL in the pronunciation? <laughs> so here's the key. We actually created our own search engine. Um, that, that's really what this is. Um, it's, it, it, it's a little bit of SQL. Look, I can actually come in here and do a VM by net usage. And notice there's not actual search criteria for it. But because we know, um, you know, uh, because back in the Argon days, even now, we had customers say, hey, I just want to search by VMs by net usage. We will actually translate it, that into VMs by maximum network rate or by network rate. So it's not SQL. It's not Google. Um, we built our own search engine. Um, with all of the data points uh, that are available within the data set. Um, and, and you can actually do some crazy stuff with the search engine. Um, maybe we'll get into that another time. Maybe we'll get into an actual search engine conversation. All right, so let's talk about micro-segmentation real quick, and I'll, I'll do this quickly. So I define this application. It's called ProdApp. I defined each tier. And basically what we've done by defining the application is we, you, the customer, have put the context around the app. And you can quickly say, hey, those 30 VMs in, in, in Prod Web are talking to mid-tier boxes. When you click on that little line, it actually tells you what the endpoints are, how many flows, and what is the sum of the bytes. Now, I'm going to skip this recommended firewall rule real quick because that's really kind of the key. Um, but in the end, we want to help you understand how the application is communicating within the VMware space and then without, you know, outside of the VMware space. So that's why you see internet, you know, physical, some DC physical, and some other virtual assets. What we really, really want our customers or what our customers really love, I know this is a lot of data, and, but they really like to get to this point right here that says, based upon the application I have defined, I've put the VMs in those tiers, I want to know source and destination important protocol to where I can create NSX micro-segmentation firewall rules, and that's what we've added in this particular case. We are showing you, hey, if you want to operationalize NSX, if you want to put micro-segmentation around this application, you can do it, and here's the guidelines on how to do it based on real-world communications and flows. Why do they all say allow? Why do they all say allow? Tim, I love it. Um, so they say allow because this is active communication, defined communication, uh, and in the end, we are doing this based on what's observed in the real world. And you might say, you know what, I really don't want my web servers talking to the internet. Well, guess what? They're doing it today, and you may need to go create a micro-segmentation policy that says, no, you can't do it in the future. Now, is there a way to automate this where it can automatically create the <laughs> NSX rules for you? Wow, that is the million dollar question. So, uh, okay, good. I do have a, I do have a, uh, in this particular data set. So, as a paying customer, I got to be very clear on this. If you are doing an assessment, this function is not allowed because this is intellectual property, um, but we do have this export as XML. And I don't believe this is perfect today. Um, we will perfect this later on uh, throughout the year. But basically, that export to XML is a formatted XML file that you literally copy and paste into, say, Postman, and you do a, you do a post to the NSX API to create firewall rules. So today it's manual, um, but we are basically giving you a format um, from Network Insight of how to go at it within an NSX. So could you uh, you look at that and then maybe have a template or something that would say for HIPAA compliance, <laughs> these are bad, or you know, for PCI compliance, this can't be done? Yeah, so, so, so that, that is actually really kind of one of the interesting things. So I'll, I'll answer it in this way. We do not know the context of your application, right? Um, we're just looking at the flow data. 
Um, what you choose to do with that um, is really up to you. You might say, you know what, I don't believe a web server should talk to the internet, or this, you know, this application, which is PCI or HIPAA compliant, should not be talking to this application. Um, because we don't understand that context, um, you know, we're not going to provide you the recommendation. But what you are going to see from us, you know, as we build this out, I mean, look, we are VMware. We have API calls. We're actually going to get into things like what-if scenarios. Or, hey, you want to recommend the creation of a firewall rule? Well, I've already got a firewall rule in NSX. I've already got a security group that has a workload that's almost identical. Do you just want to add this VM to that security group rather than creating a new one? So today it's a manual process, very clear, brutally honest. But in the end, we will get it right. Um, but we did want to help in this manual fashion by putting it in the format that the NSX API can consume. So let me interject here real quick, if you don't mind, and I can talk from an NSX SE perspective when we're talking to customers. Um, let's say you've got your data center. You've got all these flows that are happening. Um, we create all of these firewall policies that are recommended based off the flows that we're seeing. But what you don't know as a customer is that you were breached six months ago and half of these rules are rules that are based off of rogue traffic from somebody who's infiltrated your network. So would you really want to base a firewall policy based on anybody's recommendation? So what we say to do from the NSX perspective is we're just giving you a starting point because usually you sit down with micro segmentation and you go, where do I start? What do I do? We give you this big list of things at which point you can actually go and sit down, be it with your infrastructure guys, with your developers, with your whomever, and say this source, this destination, this port, is this legitimate valid traffic? Yes? Cool. We'll add that to the, you know, to the list. And that kind of starts the ball rolling and the conversation rolling. I would never recommend you take anybody's third party tool and simply just dump a policy out. Because if you were breached before you installed the tool, you've got that rogue traffic and you've instantly just told them that that's okay. And that leads to a question on Twitter. Uh, Ken's asking, can we use this to create a what if scenario before we apply the rules to NSX? So uh, the, I not think, today. What, okay. Yeah, not today. And, 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 and uh, reach, so, so we're actually having active conversations on the product side about this. So if you have a question or a recommendation, um, look, I, I'm on Twitter all the time. Shoot me a DM. Shoot me an email. Uh, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I, I, feel, I, I work with the product team, and I take direct feedback. There's a, another question, too. You're just getting them racked up tonight. Go for it. Uh, if we need to do another Network it, Insights session, I can push Tim out even further. Works for me. <laughs> Uh, does it catch protocols other than TCP, UDP, examples, IGMP, GRE, and so on? This is from Matt Creep. If you were doing IGMP inside of your VMware data center, I have questions. Now, um, look, we're, we're, we're focused purely on TCP and UDP communication. Uh, as an example, um, we even whitelist um, some of the VMware management traffic. Because really the focus here is what we're trying to do is help you define micro-segmentation policies. And if you're doing that, you're going to be looking at TCP and UDP anyway. Yeah, you have to remember that NSX only controls the VM traffic. Yep. We're not creating micro-segmentation policies for any of your ESX management, your vMotion traffic, your fault tolerance traffic, your IP storage traffic. We don't control or have any handle on any of that. It's just going to be VM traffic. Yep. What Tim said. All right. By the way, I'm, I'm terrible. This is only an hour session, right? Yes. We've got approximately 15 minutes. Okay. So we're here as long as you are, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll stick around for sure. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I've, I've been up since 4.45 in Minneapolis, flew to Chicago, then, you know, meetings in Chicago and Chicago, Dallas. So I'm, I'm, I'll probably be done right at the, uh, at the hour, hour 15 mark. But anyway, we can, we can always come back later. So let's, um, I, I hate to kill this topic, um, but for the sake of the conversation, let me, let me transition here a little bit and get into kind of the secondary use case. 
So as I said, I do all of this via search because it's me. You can do this in the GUI, but I'm literally going to say path from VM, and I'm going to choose a non-NSX VM. In this case, DB admin VM1, two VM, and I'll choose a, an NSX VM. Well, that's VN. If you don't type properly, it's not going to work, just like a search engine. Um, so ProdDB2, this is an NSX VM. So in this use case, I am literally looking at the L2, L3, L4, and L7 functions of how this VM is communicating. Okay, so I'm going to maximize this just for, for, for everybody to see. Um, notice on the right-hand side, I have all of the path details. This is all of the ports in the path. Um, so if I scroll down here real quick, I see all the port path metrics. So there's all the ports associated with the communication here. I have all the ports in the path between these two VMs. There are changes that occur because I have an SX changes, if I maybe have a new path, if I did a V motion, all of those things will come into play here because you know if I go back in time, maybe if I go back 30 days, I can actually see that there was a, uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a V motion or whatever occurred, maybe a route change, something like that. So with that in mind, this is the physical, or excuse me, the overlay underlay visibility. So I have this VM, here's all of its related data, VLANs, cluster, manager, whatever, uh, OS, and that VM is associated with this DVPG, which so happens to sit on this virtual distributed switch, and it does have IP fix enabled, it does have a VLAN, it's on VLAN 629, and it leaves this particular ESXi host, by the way, this host happens to be a UCS chassis, UCS blade, all of the host related details, what the version is, and more importantly, it will leave that host through this particular VM NIC. Okay, so we, we do have the feed, you know, this is a PNIC in this example. So we are showing you each of the, um, you know, each of the path options, and the beauty is, notice here, we do have the peer port and the peer port device, which happens to be a blade chassis, and with that in mind, you know, we can even get into some of the layer two stuff. But uh, for the sake of time, I'll just show you this. Because we want to show you the path topology. This is more of a logical topology. We are going to show you the VRFs. In this example, this VM is going to leave its, you know, its, its ESXi host. It's going to hit a VRF. In this case, happens to be a pair Nexus 7 case that are, you know, here's the routing table. Here's the routing interface details that is associated with this VM's VRF. So we're going to do the logic for you because we have all the configuration data. If you have multiple VRFs on each of these physical devices, that's fine. We're only going to show you what's pertinent to this specific VM in this routing scenario. From there, I have a Palo device. Um, this happens to be a Palo, a set of uh, Palo 5060s that happen to be doing firewalling and routing. So I have the routing table, but I also have the routing tables um, for my uh, for for the Twitter comment. There's you an any any rule, by the way, um, on deny. Um, at least it's not any any allow. Uh, and then uh, from there, I have a pair of Arista devices, a pair of 7050s that I have routing table, routing interface details. Now I'm going to stop real quick because we're still routing in the physical space at this point in time. Are there any comments or questions on the the logical topology so far between these two VMs? Looks pretty yeah, quiet. I think everybody's still on board here. All right, good. Just just got to make sure we're starting to get into inception here real quick. So now, I am going to leave the physical space, and I'm going to move to the NSX space because the VM in which we are trying to communicate is associated with NSX. So with that in mind, that packet, as an example, or, or you know, specific communication is going to leave the Aristas, um, happen to be L3 switches, by the way, they are going to hit a VM NIC on this ESXi host, which happens to be my NSX management, uh, or excuse me, my NSX edge cluster. That NSX edge cluster in this example, um, there is an uplink to an NSX edge. This happens to be provider edge three. I do have OSPF enabled. I have my default gateway routing device, my gateway routing device, as well as my OSPF area IDs and my routing table and routing interfaces from an overlay perspective. This happens to be the Edge VM. From there, I hit a VXLAN. 
But before I do that, I have a DVPG. That DVPG has VXLAN 5017 associated with it. And from there, I can see the actual VXLAN. So there's my VXLAN, all of its related details, all of its VTEPs. Now I leave the VXLAN and I hit the distributed logical routing device, which happens to be truly another VRF. There's my uh, area ID, there's my routing table, and my routing interface information for this specific LDR. From there, I hit another VXLAN, happens to be prod DB. Finally, this VM, which is residing on prod DB, has an NSX firewall. There's your NSX firewall rules that are applicable between these two VMs. So we understand the context, we understand the configuration, um, and we will show you what is applicable between these two objects, if they are allowed to communicate. And more importantly, we have a, oh my goodness, we have an any, any rule, which is offloading to a VM series firewall with an action of allow. Yes, that is a terrible firewall rule, but I needed to create a demo environment, and I didn't want to go doing a layer seven inspection, so we just created an any, any with allow. So. I've shown you physical routing devices, I've shown you logical routing devices, and I've shown you the physical firewall in a PA, and then the NSX firewall and the VM series firewall from PA. Any comments or questions? Uh, I think everybody's minds are just about blown at this point. Um. <laughs> All right, so this is Inception. <laughs> this is truly Inception, um, and I'm sorry, but it is what it is. So here, here's the awesome part. I can literally reverse the topology, and we all know the way. If 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 you're fully aware of NSX, it actually uses a different edge device to leave the environment than it used to get to. So we are looking at full routing topologies, ingress egress, from an NSX perspective, and and this really gets down into troubleshooting. So if you've got a routing issue, as an example. Um, or some somebody fat fingered an OSPF area ID, we will absolutely show it as a problem in this particular graph. Um, if there is a uh, if there's a, a physical NIC that has a packet drop um, or that has a mismatched MTU setting between the overlay and underlay, we will absolutely show you that as a problem. Not only do that, but I'm actually going to do the the GUI here. We will show you all of the related NSX health issues from a higher level perspective. So here's one of my NSX managers. We do have the ability to go back in time, just so everybody sees it here. But we have all of the NSX checklist rules. This is a combination of infrastructure rules, network you know, problems, security problems, configuration problems. Um, if, you, if you just scroll down here, I mean, I've got VTEP subnet mismatch. I've got a VTEP not found or disconnected. We're looking at the management control and data plane and validating that NSX is running like it should and that there are no configuration issues between the overlay under like like um, MTU mismatch in this example. Um, even to the point of I've got an NSX controller that may be not able to communicate with the host. So not only have all these checklist rules, by the way, there's 70 something of them, 78 today. Um, we will then correlate that into, okay, does my NSX manager have any issues? Yep, this NSX manager has, uh, you know, an NSX edge interface that is an OSPF area ID that's missing. Or uh, somebody, uh, I don't know, something happened, that CPA daemon is not running. Not only do we provide you problems as an example, but we are going to show you recommendations on how to fix the problem. So everybody loves alerts, everybody loves notification, and then they're like, well, how do I fix it? So we absolutely want to do our best to show you recommendations on how to fix these problems. If it's an MTU mismatch, we're going to say which side of the conversation um, has the mismatch. Um, so if I go here and I just type in MTU mismatch, I don't know if I have any in this particular data set, but I'll try it. I don't. Um, we're going to look at both the physical side and the virtual side and ensure that you are you know, doing what you should be doing. And then here's one more example. The NSX controller, um, maybe it's not doing proper syslog or it wasn't configured, uh, or it, this controller lost connectivity to an ESXi host. So this is just some of the many ways that we are taking NSX data, we're taking physical routing and switching data and bringing it all together. For the, for the sake of time, I'm going to show you one more thing, and then I'll open it up for questions. And by the way, this works for VLANs as well as VXLANs. And I think this will kind of kind of 
Yeah, I think this will lead to even more questions. Um, or maybe later on you're going to be like, okay, I really need to know how this works. So I'm going to look at a VXLAN in this use case. This is all of the VMs on a particular VXLAN. So I did VXLAN prod mid-tier. So each of these slices represents an ESXi host. If it was colored, it would represent a, an ESXi cluster. Um, but I have a VM, in this case prod mid-tier 5, and I quickly see how, there's prod mid-tier 5, I see how it's actually leaving. So it's got VXLAN here, there's the DVPG. It has two uplink ports in this example. So it's going to leave, you know, uh, the, the host itself, leave the two VM NICs, and I have uplinks because we understand the peer path relationship of each of the physical switches. In this case, it's L3 switches, and there are the two L3 switches in this example. And by the way, this works for VXLANs as well as VLANs. If there are problems, we are going to tell you there are problems. So it's correlated across. The last thing I'll show you here is I'm going to show you just that VM DB admin VM1. Um, and when you go to an individual VM, not the path itself, we're going to give you a little bit of a different view. So in this example, um, let me maximize this data uh, from a topology perspective. And there's the maximize. And so real quickly, I see this VM sitting on this ESXi host. It exits VLAN 629 because this VM is a part of VLAN 629. I have effects. I have the interconnect that it's associated with, which happens to be switch B in this example. But then notice here, that switch is associated with a pair of Nexus 5Ks. So there's Nexus 5K1, Nexus 5K2, and I have a full physical topology of what that VM is doing. Last but not least, I can actually tell you how this VM routes to the internet. So there's the path to the internet. We're going to leave the uh, VLAN 629, leave the VNIC on the host, or excuse me, the VM NIC on the host and the PNIC. I'm going to hit a pair of 7Ks, and then I hit a Palo Alto. So I just showed you a lot of data, and this is not everything. So I'm going to pause real quick and see if there's any comments or questions on what I've shown you so far. Uh-oh, everybody went quiet on me. Still no questions here. I know I'm just uh, just sitting here amazed at the, the insight that we have here and just being able to see that data flow all, all the way out to the physical and back in is incredible. Well, and, and look, I mean, I said it from the beginning, Network Enzyme makes me look really good. Um, there's, this is a very powerful solution. I know I'm a little bit biased. Um, there's more to it. Um, hopefully we got a little bit of a glimpse today uh, of what it can do and where it's going. Um, yeah, so comments or questions from the, uh, anybody on the call? Just some comments. Uh, Mind-blowing demo uh, <laughs> on the Twitters. Uh, really impressive. No questions. It's just sweet in the Q&A box. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. So, so a couple things just, just for everybody out there. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll post it on Twitter here in just a little bit. Um, but there is a video of cross-cloud services that we demoed last year at VMworld. That's what I focus on now um, when we will be launching it soon. But more importantly, um, reach out to your VMware teams. Um, we do allow you to do a, a, an evaluation of, of Network Insight. Um, if, if you're looking at NSX or not looking at NSX, it might help you, um, you know, get down the path further. And uh, and by the way, Joey Ware, I know you're probably listening or might be listening. <laughs> Sorry, bro, you're no longer my favorite Tam. Um, that that has been reserved for somebody else to be named later. He actually just uh, the shot at you. I'm not sure if you saw that. It's oh no, I did. I absolutely did. That, that's oh. why I responded in that fashion. Yeah. But no, that's not looking tight. B brown bag starting some drama inside VMware. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks for the opportunity tonight, Tim, Tom, and team. Reach out. Tim knows this. Uh, I'm an open book. If I can answer it, I'll answer it for you, as long as it's not recorded or in an electronic format. 
Um, I will not be at EMC World. Or Del I still call it EMC World. Forgive me. Um, I was going to be. Um, there will be a demo at EMC, Dell EMC World available for both NSX and Network Insight. Um, and if anybody happens to be going to Palo Alto Ignite, I probably will be there in June. So there you go. Excellent. And, of course, you can be reached at, at the Sean Odell on Twitter. And, you know, we really appreciate you coming on tonight and just uh, blowing our minds with this. And, uh, yeah. So if there's no other questions, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. We're going to go ahead and stop the recording.